Hello everybody on YouTube, this is Super Nintendo and welcome back to another episode of Super... Or not Super... <laughs> Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we found the titular Thousand Year Door. But, uh, we also found a clue leading to the Crystal Heart that we need to get. There are apparently several of them that we were going to need to find. Why am I starting here, you might ask? Well, apparently, after you make your first file, for whatever reason, the prologue thing actually plays where it should. In the uh, original, at least. Like, before you even go to the title screen. Which I find kind of interesting. But if we skip past it... Now Goombella is on the title screen. <laughs> I found that out when I was going through the game on my own time, going through the first chapter, because I've already played through the first three or so chapters of the original, so it's not really spoiling anything for me. So, um, I just kind of wanted to play through, like, the first chapter or so, just to kind of keep myself engaged with the game. So, um, I'll see you guys when we get into the game. Okay, now that we're back in the game, we can head to Petalburg, which is apparently where we need to go. Hey! Alright, let's -a go! Now that I've actually heard some of the music, though, like, one thing I definitely got to say about the remake is I feel like the remake has, like, boppier music than the original. Like, I really feel like the music of this version... Crap, I, like, go too soon. Um, I really feel like the music of this version just... I don't know. It just... It feels like it is a lot boppier than the original, where, like, it's not... The original wasn't bad, but, like, the music of this version, I don't know, just feels like it has a lot more spring in its step, if, uh, if I can put it in any way. It feels a lot more... I, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not really a music major or anything like that, so I don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of soggy and majorly gross. Hmm. It seems to be almost inviting us to do something, doesn't it? But what? Hmm, when in doubt, hit it with your hammer. B bloop Ouch! That hurt! I love the way the water looks. Bloop, 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 bloop! Who just... Who just up and whack someone's tootsies like that? Bloop, bloop, bloop! Someone with the ser some serious moxie, that's who. Well, I mean, personally, I'd, I'd rather have Millie than moxie, but that's just me. <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. Would you look at that? It's some saucy mustached guy. Bloopity, bloop, blue. He's in a world of hurt. Bloop, 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 bloop. I'll give him a taste of the old tentacle trample. Hey, Mario, you remember what Professor Franklin told us, right? You can press Y to change our attack order. If your HP drops, you can press Y to put me in front. You can't play from this fright. So, uh, yeah, that is definitely something to keep in mind. Whoever is in front will likely take 
the brunt of the attacks. Not always, but it is much more likely for them to attack uh, whoever's in front as opposed to who's in back. But let's tattle on the blooper. That's a blooper, and a really super humongous one, too. Ew, it's all slimy. I just totally can't stand slimy, nasty, icky things. G-R-O-S-S, -S, gross. Max HP is 12, attack is 1, and defense is 0. It attacks with tentacles and ink. Once you damage both of its tentacles, it'll fall down, and then it's attack time. By the way, the tentacles each have 3 HP. Now relax and make seafood out of this slimy, nasty blooper. Honestly, yeah, it's gonna be... Like, it's not super bad as, like, a thing. Bloop bloop, hey mustache. Bloop 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 bloop. You're thinking I'd taste good, aren't you? Admit it. Bloop 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 bloop. You want a snack on these tentacles, don't you? Ew, I'd rather, I'd rather bloop. Or your darn bloopin'. I don't know what the difference is between these two, but like, I, I'll go with this. Bloop, 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 got this punk. Yeah, I, I didn't time that, All right? There we go. Honestly, that's another reason why I wanted to play this a little bit on my own time. It's just to, like, get the timing down because there's a lot of timing in this game because of the whole action command thing and the blocking and, and the paper combat. I did not put on the badge. Oh well. I'll put it on after this fight. We got a power power hammer badge last time that uh, if we put it on it would do I believe three or four damage. I forgot to put it on. Pretty simple fight, in all honesty. Oh man, I did not time that right. <laughs> Alright, Goombella, finish off this blooper. Sweet, we got 50 coins, and we got 20 stars. Star pieces, star points, whatever. Blah bloop. All right. Um, let's put that on. Badges are basically like little bonus things that you can put on that will help out quite a bit as you travel through the game. So, let's go down this pipe. Chapter 1, Castle and, Dur and Dragon. I almost said Castle and Dungeon. start of our adventure. This is completely awesome! Before we head on, general rule of thumb in these Paper Mario games is if you see a tree or a bush, whack it with your hammer. Because usually there is something nice hidden inside, like some money or a star piece. Star pieces 
are um, basically used for uh, I I think they are used for what is it? Collect all the they they're generally used for um there there's a shop later in the game that takes them as currency and a lot of these things are hidden pretty well actually see anything that humongous before. It looked kind of scary, too. I definitely flew into that castle back there, right? Let's get going in case it comes back. Here we go. Again. <laughs> hmm, this place doesn't look suspicious at all. This rock kind of reminds me of a pipe. Eh, but it's just a rock. It can't be anything that ourselves another mushroom. Not every tree has something inside it, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, a lot of them do. The general rule of thumb is to, uh, be prepared for anything. A close call badge. This will basically mean that if Mario is at five or below, enemies will miss uh, randomly, which is definitely very good. Yeah. You definitely want to be ready for any enemy coming out because you definitely want that first strike as much as possible. This game can get pretty hard. At least from what I remember of the original. We're getting pretty close to a level up. We'll be getting that soon, if I remember correctly. I say as if I didn't already like, get to <laughs> basically the end of this whole chapter. We can't do anything here just yet, unfortunately, but I'll remember it for later. Oh, one more thing, Mario. If you ever find yourself wondering what to do, just press ZL to ask for a hint. I'm full of good ideas, you know? Stomp the Goomba. I think we'll probably end up getting our level up after we finish this battle. So, Goombella, if you don't mind. Level up. When you get a level up, you are given an option. You are allowed to choose a upgrade to HP, increase your your HP and your partners by five. Um, five for each of you, by the way, not a uh, five total like in Bug Fables. Yeah, I'm probably going to be talking a bit about Bug Fables throughout this Let's Play because, like, honestly, playing through this makes me realize that. Bug Fables, gameplay-wise, really wasn't handled all that well. Um, flower points, which are basically like your your power points, your, uh, your PP in a lot of other RPGs, and your badge points. Uh, these, you need badge points in order to equip badges. So, for this first one, I'm going to be going with badge points. 
Um, I will probably be alternating between flower points and badge points throughout the Let's Play. Um, because I don't see myself going for HP all that often, personally, but... Anyway, badge points. And we get a full level up, and all of our resources restored. Our flower points are restored if we used up any, and, um, and our star meter is filled up too. Pretty nice. A nice little detail is that, like, with Mario's hammer, you can, like, smash down all these, uh, like, different things. They'll eventually pop back up, though, but it's a neat little detail. They didn't have to do it. I don't even know if they do that in the original. And now there's a pipe. Little lame, but your partner doesn't follow you into the background. They did in Super Paper Mario. I don't know why they don't in the remake of this game, but maybe it's just because they're not needed. transition there and if we come over here we can get ourselves another star piece so um, I'd like to talk a little bit about something if I may um, modern Paper Mario kind of has this really bad um, problem that the original Paper Mario games didn't have where like the paper thing was more just an aesthetic in the original game we got a mystery. It's a random thing. Um, fire flower. Where, um, the, the older Paper Mario games, the paper thing was more just an aesthetic. Like, no, hardly ever was it ever acknowledged that their world is made out of paper or that they are made out of paper or anything. It was just kind of an aesthetic thing. The modern Paper Mario games, though, make the paper thing their entire fucking identity. Like, it is so goddamn annoying, the way that the modern Paper Mario games are. Like, I cannot fucking stand how modern Paper Mario is. Like, I'm someone who looks up Let's Plays or something of, like, a series that I might be interested in or a game that, like, I'm on the fence about. And I've seen Let's Plays on Sticker Star and Color Splash and Origami King. And holy fucking Christ, those games. Like, I have never wanted to steer clear of any other game series in my life after seeing footage on those games. Like, I just... Wow. Anyway, let's move on. Pedalberg. Welcome, travelers. Hmm? Where are you, you ask? Why, this is Pedalberg. Sorry, it's been a long time since we've had visitors here. Yippity, since that dragon hooktail was spotted flying around this area. Well, it didn't help tourism, to put it that way. People just stopped visiting. Dragon? Hooktail? It must have been that huge thing we saw earlier, Mario. So it's called Hooktail, huh? Ooh. Scary name. By the way, Green Boots, have you ever heard of these things called Crystal Stars? We're on a quest for them. It's very important. Crystal Stars, you say? Hmm. Nope, can't say I've heard of them. Sorry about that. You may want to speak with the mayor, though. He's old. Really old. And as such, he knows all kinds of stuff. Koopas of his age are, um, really smart. Anyway, the mayor lives in that pink house up ahead. 
pink house sounds totally hideous, but it should be easy to find. Thanks for your help. So over here is an inn. Um, we can go in there to recover any like HP or anything. It's a uh, pretty pretty neat. Oh, by the way, there are some parts in the game that have these uh, things here that are kind of more flimsy. We can't do anything with them right now, but it might be a good idea to to just hammer random parts of the ground to find parts like this every so often. Because you never know where these things are. They kind of tend to stick around, you know? Top of the morning! Tis I, Bub... Bub... Boo... Bub... Bull... Bub... That day. <laughs> I am as happy as can be. Why? Simply because I'm surrounded by flowers. Halt! I am General White. I am Bomon. I have lost my hopes and dreams. I live in solitude anyway. I must apologize, but I ask that you leave me alone. Hmm. You have a rather unique design. Something tells me you're gonna be important later. But then again, you also have a very unique design. Oh, bonjour, mademoiselle. Isn't it a beautiful day? No, 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 no. Not you, Monsieur de la, de la Moustache. I am speaking to that to the lovely little cabbage behind you, Mon Petit Show. I cannot speak French. I don't know how to pronounce that. Do you hear me, beautiful? Abandon this dullard and come away with me. Ew! Are you kidding? Ew! Nice wig, you disco wannabe. Take a hike, bozo the chump. <laughs> Sacre bleu. I am wounded. Such a beautiful honesty. Such a sharp tongue. I shall retreat for now. If you change your mind, please come find me. What a total sleaze. Let's go somewhere else, Mario. <laughs> I love voicing this guy. Even though I, I can't read French shit for, to save my life, it is so fun to do a French accent. Not as fun as doing my, uh, my delusional old man voice, but it's still fun. Um, Gumbella, can you tell us more about this character? Ew! What is with this guy, huh? He grosses me out just being near this weirdo. Alright, Whatever. His name is du Dupre. He's this icky guy who tries to sweet talk everybody. There, no more. <laughs> uh, That's so funny. But not as funny as uh, some of the other characters that we might get introduced to. Ooh. I don't think I've ever seen a uh, female Koopa before this game. Well, hello there. My name is Koopy Koo. It's nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, that hat, those overalls, and that magnificent mustache. You're Mario, aren't you? I've heard tales of how strong you are. If you're here, that means you're gonna challenge that monstrous hook tail. Oh! If only Koops were as brave as you. I'm not gonna be doing Goombella's, like, thing on every NPC. I just wanted to do it on NPCs that have, like, funny descriptions by her. Huh? What's it? Someone there? Who is it? Who? 
What do you want from me? Hey, Newt, you're thieves! Here to rob a defenseless old Koopa. Despicable! Go on, do what you will. But, as you can plainly see, there's nothing to steal here. Oh, I guess I do have a little money. Take it, you fiends! And my antique shell, too! Just leave the photos of me and the missus. Can't do without those memories. What? Not thieves, you say? Well, what's your story then? Oh, wait, you folks looking for the crystal stars? Well, why didn't you pipe up before, you idiot? <laughs> We're just wasting time here. The crystal stars you say you're hunting. Um, wait, where did I hear about those things again? Aha, got it. Hooktail. Hooktail's got what you're looking for. She's this enormous ornery dragon. Eats folks, they say. You know about Hooktail, right? I may have heard the name. Well, this Hooktail's brutal flyby snackings have all of us on pins and needles. So, are you reckless fools? I mean, are you gallant heroes off to rough her up? Wait, hold on now. Oh, -ho, showers promising. If you can rid us of Hooktail, we'll shower you with gratitude and reward. Wait, what's that I hear? You'll accept no answer? I didn't say that. What an unselfish man! You're noble indeed. Yep, a good egg. Now, what did you say your name was again? Murphy? Hmm, that's a fine name. Yes, a fine name indeed. Well now, Murphy. <laughs> it's Mario. I appreciate that, Murphy. They are nice eyebrows. Now listen up. If you're intent on going to Hookdale Castle, find the secret pipe that's located somewhere in Petal Meadows. I know, you need the Sun and Moon Meadows to use that pipe. For some reason, they're locked away in underground passages that are only found by ten-year-olds building pocket monsters. These stones are somewhere in Schwamp Fortress, just past the village. Get them first. Well then, Murphy, get going and really wall that hooktail monster. <laughs> oh, I love boys and crazy old men. Between this guy and old man watch it from Super Paper Mario, like they are just some of my favorite characters to voice. That's Croup, the mayor of Petalburg. He just babbles on, whether he's alone or not. Oh, so he's just like me then. <laughs> I, you know, I joke about that, but legitimately, I do not know when to shut up. There are so many times where I will just talk someone's ear off, even if they have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I just can't tell if he's really senile or if he's working that angle, you know? Well, I think that'll do it for this episode. We got ourselves another mission, and we came here to Petalburg. Next time on Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, we're going to make our way to Schwank Fortress. And see if we can't, um, find the sun and moon medals. See you guys then. A 70 centimeter square window.